and welcome back. By now you have all the packages downloaded to install our QMail toaster system. So we'll do a quick directory just to make sure they're all there. You can verify they're all there by going back to the main QMail toaster website and taking a look under the stable packages tab and just verifying that each of those files is in the directory now. The next one we're going to need to download is going to be the cnt50-installs-script.sh. We'll copy this link location and come back and wget it. As this script suggests, it's going to install the system onto CentOS 5.0 32-bit. We'll need to chmod the script so that it's executable. And now that it's executable, we need to go ahead and we need to run the script. The script's going to run through and it's going to ask you some questions. It's going to let you know which package you're installing. Here it shows we're installing Daemon Tools Toaster. Then it's going to ask you if you want to continue. Yes, skip, or quit. The reason we ask the question is if there is an issue during the installation, you'll see it on the screen. We'll go ahead and we'll get this one building. And you'll see if there is an issue, you'll see it on this screen here as it runs through. And you'll be able to quit to go back to figure out what the issue was and repair it or quit out of the script. You can also skip packages if you know what you're doing and want to do an advanced install and know that you don't need certain portions. But for the most part you're just going to hit enter a lot as the system runs through. The script does cover a lot of the utilities and setup for you. Once it's all done compiling each individual package, it's going to go ahead and it's going to install it for you. As you can see, it installed Daemon Tools Toaster. Next, we need to build and install UCSPI TCP Toaster. Once again, the script's going to run through the build process. And once the build process is complete, it's going to install the package for you. Next is vpotmail toaster. vpotmail, if you're not familiar with it, allows you to have what are called virtual users on your system. That way when you create an email account, you don't have to give that email account an actual login on the system. It's going to create an email address in a MySQL database. And that's how the user will actually receive their emails. A message will come in, It'll get the database will get queried to see if the user actually exists. If the user does, it runs through the scanning process. Once the message has completed that and passed, it will then access the database again to let it know where to deliver the message to, which is going to be a folder under our home directory. And you can see the vpotmail toaster is now installed. Next, we're going to install and build libdomainkeys toaster. This is going to allow us to sign our messages with domain keys. This is not absolutely necessary and is something if, that if you're going to use, you need to go back through and actually manu manually configure this to work. Next is going to be libsrs2 toaster. libsrs2 toaster allows you to uh, forward emails and rewrite some of the message headers. This is convenient for uh, if you're scanning emails for a different domain or if you want your emails to be scanned and or delivered on the system but you also want to forward them to another uh, email account such as Gmail or Yahoo or whatever. You can rewrite some of the headers so that it gets delivered correctly. If you want to learn more about the SRS toaster you can go to the wiki. Eric Espinoza has written some documentation on there and some information on how to configure the package. Most users, I'd say probably 99%, won't need the package. So if you can't think of a reason why you would actually need it, it's okay to just leave it alone. It's there and it won't be used. Now we need to install the actual QML Toaster package. We'll begin the build process.
We've added a lot of patches to QML Toaster to add additional functionality and features. The latest patch that I've added to the mix has been the EMPF patch, which allows you to set some rather restrictive and complex rules on your email users. Uh, for example, you can have a accounting department and you can use the EMPF patch to de uh, define a rule where your accounting department can only send emails to the bank. They would not be able to send emails to any other users. I can think of a few situations where this could come in handy, but it's been very much requested on the mailing list, so we went ahead and just added it in and the uh, last update. Also included is the QMail tap package, which allows you to quote unquote tap a email account and or domain. That way you can get a copy of all incoming and or outgoing emails and send them to a different location. This is great for email archiving and depending on your country may be required by law. Here in the United States where I'm located at, if you're a publicly traded company or you are a company that deals with uh, governments and sensitive information, you are required to keep an archive of all of your emails. It's running through now and generating some certificates so that we can do things like support uh, SSL and TLS for SMTP, SMTP sessions. Now that that's all done, we're going to install Courier Auth Lib Toaster. Courier Auth Lib does take a minute or two to compile. The next package after this one, Courier IMAP, takes a little while to compile. This one, that one will take a few minutes. There's a lot of different components to Courier IMAP. As such, it compiles many, many, many little programs as it runs through that all link together. That's why that installation takes so long. Since this one's probably going to take a little bit, and I know Courier IMAP will, we're going to go ahead and we're going to fast forward through this installation of Courier and when we come back to the video you'll see that Courier Auth Lib is installed and we will be have just finished installing Courier IMAP.